I used to I used to draw really small. Like I used to draw I would have a whole piece of paper and I would just draw in the middle of the paper. It was like this like three quarter size big, you know, it was really, really tiny, especially compared to the paper. And my mom would be like, You have all this space on the paper and you draw in this little tiny area. <laughs> And I guess that was the reason the whole time, because it just feels more natural to sketch in a smaller area than it does to sketch in a big area, because everything feels more feels more tight. It feels, uh, uh, you know, just just better, especially in my opinion. But you can sketch in whatever size you want to. Just make sure you line art or you paint or whatever you're doing in the bigger resolution. So I just take your sketch, scale it up to as big as you want it, which is what I did in this piece right here, and then just do your line art over top of that. Um, but yeah, so moving on. Uh, the next tip I have is uh, to draw what you know. I've heard people say this many times, um, but I think what people know is a little sh more stretched than what they actually know. So, for instance, I mean, I we go you go outside every day. You probably see cars, you see buildings, you see people. Um, and you're like, oh, well, I know people because I see people with my eyes every single day. I see them on TV. I see them on the news. I see them, you know, wherever else. I see them in real life. Um, but the thing is, is that when you draw people people are one of the most difficult things to draw <laughs> ever and it's not because you don't know what they look like because you know exactly what people look like you can you can draw them in your mind you without even having your eyes open it's, it's super easy but the reason people are so difficult to capture especially you know more real, realistically i'm not talking about like you know like cartoon style like you know the simpsons i mean the simpsons it obviously you know resembles people and you know what it's supposed to be you don't think they're like some aliens or something but they don't look like actual people that you'll see walking around outside um they might i don't know what neighborhood you live in i don't know you could have some really strange stuff going on in your neighborhood but either way most people don't look like the people in the simpsons um but the reason they're so difficult to draw is because though no one is exactly symmetrical or perfect quote unquote it, it makes it difficult to actually draw people properly because you have to be kind of precise even if you're doing a style that isn't a perfect style. Like right now I'm drawing, it's not, my line art isn't perfectly straight. I'm not purposely, I'm not trying to make it perfectly straight. I like the little bit of the noise, a little bit of the randomization, a little, a little bit of, uh, 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 um, messy kind of style it's not exactly messy but it's it's still pretty clean but either way you have to be more precise than if you were drawing like a tree trees can literally look like whatever you can go outside and see a billion trees yes they all look similar but there can be really really jacked up looking trees in real life and nobody's gonna go wow that tree doesn't look like a tree they're just gonna go oh that tree's you know it looks it's kind of messed up wow look at the the root it's looking all weird and stuff but if you draw a person looking strange like a strange tree would look then they're gonna go what's wrong with this person <laughs> so it's a little more difficult to get it right and you'll see a lot of famous painters especially um further back in the years um in the 1800s and 1700s and stuff like that you'll see people like you know picasso they'll do strange looking people and um, that was it's okay because it's a purpose it's a purposeful style and people don't go oh that's not what a person looks like they just go, oh, that's, if they don't like it, then they'll go, oh, that's a weird style. Um, which brings me to my next point. <laughs> um, well, actually, to finish up drawing what you know, instead of drawing what you see and what you know every single day, like a person or a person's face or trying to draw your mom or trying to draw your sister or your brother, or anything like that, try and draw something that you, that you know that isn't a difficult thing. So pretty much what I'm saying is like, if you have some special, like if you go to school and you have some USB stick or something, just I'm looking at a USB stick right now. If you have something, not something difficult, like even a pencil, just draw something that you use daily or very often. And then draw that until you got it down. Like if you have cereal every single morning, draw a spoon until you got it down. Just instead of just drawing a regular spoon, draw like a crazy looking spoon. You just do anything to the spoon, make a make a, a tree branch wrap around it, do anything you can until you have that spoon down in a bunch of different ways. That now we can move on to my next point. Draw what you love. Drawing what you love is so much easier than drawing something you don't care about at all. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're working if I was working on a project that I didn't care for, I wouldn't really care too much to get it as best as I can. I still would personally, that's just because how that's how I am. But if I was working on like 
let's see what don't I like I don't know like I don't I've never had I've never had beetroot if I was working on, on a project that involved beetroot I'd be like yeah okay whatever <laughs> but if I was working on a project that had like I don't know something that I like <laughs> like Avatar the Last Airbender which is what this uh, the, which is what this piece is based off of um, then I would then I would care more to draw which is why I kind of added that into the mix now if this was just me just standing looking at the camera with all the avatar stuff out of the picture then i wouldn't really care as much um and also don't focus on what you have trouble with my next point don't focus on what you have trouble with i was having a problem i don't know if you noticed or not but i, ha I was having a problem drawing my nose i always have problems with noses because if they're if it's from the front or just from a little bit of an angle it's kind of awkward to get them especially in a flat graphic style like i'm doing right now with just straight line art and just base color um it's kind of awkward to get it to where i want it to be because you can see no depth whatsoever so you kind of have to push the nose to one side to make it look like you can actually see an outline of a nose and I always have a little bit of trouble with it. And I was like, okay, I got it to a point where I didn't hate it. And I just left it because it's not like it's terrible. It's just not exactly how I wanted it, but it's fine because most likely I'm the only person that's going to notice it. <laughs> most of the time when you hate something a lot and you want to change it, it's usually you're only going to be the only person that notices it. Most of the time, unless it's like super obvious, no one else is really going to care or even notice it. They're going to be focused on everything else in the piece all together, and you're just picking out individual pieces. They're going to see, they're not going to see, oh, that nose, oh, the mouth, oh, the this and that, unless they stare at it for hours, which they're not going to do most likely. But they're going to see the whole thing together, not just the nose, not just the mouth, not just the eyes or the little tiny mess up you had by the eye. It's not going to be like that. Um, also, practice what you can do, what you already have down, and then add something you can't do to that. So, for instance, like I mentioned earlier, if you draw a spoon all the time because you use spoons every day, you can even stare at a spoon while you're drawing. Um, if you use a spoon every day, stare at that spoon, draw the spoon, get it down until you have it down, and then let's say you can't draw a fork. One day, add a fork next to the spoon. Add small things until you get to the point where you can draw each one comfortably. Like I said, if you have a problem with noses like I do, then go ahead, draw a face. Literally, you can adopt a style with no noses. There's so many styles where people do not have noses. Just do that until you don't worry about the fact that you can't draw noses. Don't be like, oh, I can't draw because I can't do this piece because I, I don't know how to draw noses. I can't do this because I don't know how to do this. I don't. If you can't draw hands, then do a style where they have mitten hands. If you can't draw hands, then then do something else. Do anything. Literally, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, you're not just my point is don't stop doing something just because you can't do one thing. Also. Use as little detail as possible. This is a preference thing once again. Right now I'm doing a flat graphic style like I mentioned earlier. So I'm trying to use as least, least detail as possible to convey what I want. So usually when you have clothing on, there's going to be more wrinkles than this. But I don't want to add that much because I want it to be as simplistic as possible but still get the point across. They're kind of just lines to reinforce some kind of texture because I because it's a, it is a flat graphic style and I don't want it to be too plain everywhere. You can see on my neck I have kind of lines and places uh, coming off of the line art and stuff. Um, also, don't just copy somebody else's style. Kind of look at other people's styles. You can get influence from other people's styles. You can get inspiration from other people's styles. Don't try and find your style. Just draw what you like to draw and then you'll you'll just come out of it. Don't let somebody tell you that there's a rule. Now, if you're trying to draw a hyper-realistic person's face and this and that, and of course, maybe you draw something like The Simpsons, then yeah, of course, that's, that's wrong. But there's no such thing as wrong in art unless you're going for something and it doesn't look like that at all. Um, and the, one of the last ones I have for you here is to leave the project and then come back a little bit later. If you leave for an hour and then come back later on, you will see an enormous difference between the what you thought it looked like and what it did look like. You could either hate it or you can love it more than you did because now you haven't seen it for a while. You've forgotten all of the little tiny mistakes, quote unquote, that you thought you made. You have forgotten how good you think it looked. Maybe you thought it was great and you come back and it looks kind of strange. This piece looks weird. The mouth looks weird. And the last one I have for you is, of course, to have fun as always. Having fun is the biggest thing. If you don't have fun, then there's no point to draw. I will see you in the next video. Get out there, draw, have some fun, take risks, do what you can do. Don't do what you can't do, but then add it later on once you got it down. Flip the canvas, rotate the canvas, listen to the music, take breaks, vary your line weights, draw in higher resolutions, draw what you know, draw what you love, and don't focus on what you have trouble with. I will see you guys in the next tutorial, but until then, bye-bye.